And so I think there's probably a growing conflict between states and the federal government. And I think there's some really good reason for the federal government to be concerned right now because I think there are a lot of people in the United States that are beginning to say, where are we going to draw the line in the sand and say no more to the federal government? Every generation faces tyranny. Every generation faces corruption and is forced to stand up against it or become enslaved. Our ancestors fought and died so that we'd have the little bit of liberty we have now. It is a sacred treasure. And from liberty comes all prosperity. The human race is depending on all of you out there that are seeing this information to educate yourself on the facts presented in this film and then to take action. We've got to forget about Washington, D.C. I think Washington, D.C. is too far gone. It's a cesspool of iniquity. Uh, I think it's totally and thoroughly corrupt. It doesn't matter which party you put in charge of the White House or Congress. Nothing of substance changes. I really think the power and strength of the people rests where it always has rested, and that is with the states. So we need to start putting some teeth into our state laws and we need to be electing sheriffs that are going to protect us from federal agents when they initially don't understand this because their civics lessons weren't very good in school. The Tenth Amendment very clearly says any authority not granted to the federal government by the Constitution belongs to we the people and the sovereign states that make up this union. The states had all the power. They gave some few powers that are listed in the Constitution to the federal government and kept all the rest for themselves. Well, my first guest works for the people of Oklahoma and he's trying to do right by them. But he believes it's kind of hard to do that when the federal government keeps butting into the state's business. And now he's working to pass a bill in the state of Oklahoma that would declare state sovereignty from the federal government. Well, the resolution is saying that the Constitution is the supreme law of the land and that it specifically delegates certain powers to the federal government and all other powers are reserved to the people and the states and that the federal government has increasingly uh, moved out of that framework over the last several decades and that they need to get back into that proper role. A number of states already have them. Many more are considering similar resolutions as a bulwark, proponents say, against the federal government handing down laws that they see as unfunded or unconstitutional. Ongoing pattern of overstepping its constitutional authority. Dozens of states are now considering resolutions asserting their sovereignty under the Tenth Amendment of the Constitution, pushing back against Washington's intrusion into everything from land use to gun control. And there's really uh, somewhat of an uprising in the states across the country is this uh, federal law called the Real ID Act. Texas appears ready to declare its sovereignty again. A resolution doing just that has the unabashed endorsement of the state's governor. I believe the federal government has become oppressive. I believe it's become oppressive in its size, its intrusion in the lives of its citizens, and its interference with the affairs of our state. The bill, HCR 50, is currently in Texas's house. It reasserts the constitutional guarantee of the Tenth Amendment. We need to focus on our state government. We need to focus on our state legislators, the governor's mansion, the state supreme court, the sheriffs at the state and local level. All these, all these agencies uh, need to be the focus of freedom-loving people. And if you do treasure the notion that your rights are unalienable, meaning imbued in you by our Creator, and you want to defend the American circumstance, the only way we can effectively battle the Agenda 21 protocol is to do it locally. We have the checks and balances in the states to be able to maintain the freedom of our people. You get involved in your local area. I mean, that's where you can affect the most change. I don't know why we have FEMA. I don't see anything about a FEMA in our Constitution. I think it should be eliminated. We're fighting tyranny. We're standing up for liberty. We're the good guys. We have uh, the moral high ground on our side. All you have to do is get started. Take that first step, and then you'll find that, that you get this momentum, and it can't, you can't stop it. We are the government. Do whatever you can to get involved and get to know what is happening in your state. Are they 
watching people in your state and sending information up to FBI and Homeland Security? Are you going to be profiled in a report issued by your state? Just be alert, study your constitution, learn all you can. I think there's certain basic organic documents that you need to become familiar with. I would start with the Mayflower Compact. Uh, the next one I would urge you to read is Patrick Henry's famous speech where he ended by saying, give me liberty or give me death. Certainly the Declaration of Independence is one you really, it's a philosophical framework. Uh, the Constitution came along after that to be uh, actually the blueprint or the framework of a building built upon uh, the ideas uh, espoused in the Declaration of Independence. You must read the Federalist Papers and the Anti-Federalist Papers, Northwest Ordinance, George Washington's Farewell Address. These are the organic documents from which we came and it basically expressed who we were when we obtained the greatness it's who we need to go back to. On top of that, there are many other really important books to read to understand your enemy. And I would suggest The Shadows of Power by James Perloff, uh, Creature from Jekyll Island by uh, G. Edward Griffin. Uh, another one uh, actually written by one of the enemies, in my opinion, is uh, Carol Quigley's Tragedy and Hope. So read those, uh, those books, study and all to know what we are, but also equip yourself with understanding of who your enemy is because we're in a struggle for our future at this point in time. I am now working at a network that will follow through on a story. I am not a journalist. I'm just a guy who cares. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just a guy who cares an awful lot about my country. And I think you do too. But sometimes, for political reasons or whatever reasons, people just won't follow a story. I have to tell you, I'm doing a story tonight that I wanted to debunk these FEMA camps. I'm tired of hearing. You know about them? Sure. I'm tired of hearing. I wanted to debunk them. Well, we've now for several days done research on them. I can't debunk them. And we're going to carry the story tonight. I don't know anything about it. So. It, is, it is our government. If you trust our government, it's fine. If you have any kind of fear that we might be headed towards a totalitarian state, look out. I've been watching Glenn Beck for a long time, and I saw him say that Ron Paul supporters are basically all terrorists and that the army should watch Ron Paul supporters. Then he became Ron Paul's biggest buddy. I watched him uh, you know, come out repeatedly and demonize the 9-11 truth movement or anybody who questioned anything the government did and then when he said he was going to expose the FEMA camps and he thought they were real I said look out folks this is his MO he acts like he's on our side he acts like he's really investigating and then he sucker punches you once he's gotten your confidence popular mechanics they did an incredible job in the writing of the definitive debunking of the 9-11 conspiracy that everybody knows now is not true because of popular mechanics except Rosie O'Donnell James is here now to do the same with the FEMA camps. He specifically was going to build a straw man argument and go after some of the fake stories of uh, false FEMA camps like the Amtrak train station. This is an Amtrak repair facility in Beach Grove, Indiana. The, uh, the, the woman who made this video initially claims that it's some kind of American Auschwitz and they've outfitted buildings with gas and they've got these strange turnstiles. In fact, it's, uh, it is a repair facility. They're repairing trains in there. Well, trains, I believe Auschwitz had trains. I'm just saying, Jim. Oh, yes, there are real FEMA camps and there are bills and legislation and Americans have even been held in FEMA camps before during demonstrations in Seattle. But he didn't choose to go into any of that, even though we mailed him packets of that material. One of those buildings has been knocked down. This video actually dates from about 1995. So the turnstiles are there for, they, they were there, they're not there anymore? Right, the turnstiles were just ordinary subway turnstiles. It would be familiar to anyone who's ridden the subways in New York. He went to the disinfo on the internet knowing he could discredit a straw man. And that's what's so despicable about Glenn Beck is that his propaganda is so shoddy uh, that it's just amazingly predictable. By the way, if you want to get all of the information and more on the FEMA camps, debunk information that